Viking 195. Let's take a look at what we've got. Of course, up front is the heavy-duty gearbox that drives the propeller with its uh, sight glass on the side. You get the flywheel with the torsion dampening coupling between the engine and the gearbox. Here's the uh, exhaust tailpipe from the turbocharger with a resonating spring attached. It's slightly new here now. We drill a little hole down here and attach the spring like that. The turbocharger itself, the air inlet to the turbocharger with its ducting going back to the inlet side of the turbo. Turbocharger control unit with its actuator mechanism. The coolant that goes through the turbocharger, very different from an air-cooled turbo that has to rely on only oil for cooling. This one also uses the cooling from the engine, run it through the turbo and keeps the midsection of the turbo cool. And then we have the oil return line here going back into the crankcase. Here's the output of the turbocharger with its ducting running behind the engine. There's the high pressure side of the turbo with the maximum of one point or a 0.75 bar or 21 pounds of pressure at takeoff. Here's the intercooler with its mounting. The engine mount now has an offset to it of two and a half degrees. So we did tilt the intercooler in a little bit, changed the mount in order to do that. Cut it, moved the intercooler in and rebolted it. Starter motor with a heel pull engagement to the ring gear. High pressure pump for the direct injection with the fuel rail running to the four high pressure fuel injectors. Intake manifold, throttle body with the throttle position sensor that controls the fully automatic turbocharging wastegate system. 40 amp nip and denso alternator with a automatic belt tensioner system on the back side. Top engine mount and bottom engine mounts. Oil filter is easy to get to and replace. There's the hydraulic tensioner for the belt. Zero W20 oil. These are the coils, which are called smart coils. One for each cylinder. They fire the spark plugs and no high tension spark plug wires. Up front is the intake cam sensor. It helps regulate the intake cam and phases it so that it's optimized for idle and also full power. The exhaust cam sensor is not used and the same with this solenoids down in here for the exhaust is not used. There will be a little block off plate available for this if you want to change that later on to remove the whole solenoid and replace it with just a little machine plate instead of that. This engine is now ready to ship to a customer and it can be installed onto its engine mount through the four locations back here. The uh, intercooler is already mounted to the engine and there's a duct that will go on to the cowling and it fares up to the intercooler duct here. Some people, if you want a perfectly tight seal, you can use neoprene like swimsuit material 
uh, to join the two together because it'll unfold on one piece. Here's the hose for the gearbox venting. It goes to a little fitting on the back side, and then it's going to go up to a bottle on the firewall. Another hose that's included goes here, then it goes overboard. That's crankcase breather. There's another larger breather on this side. There's a hose included for that as well. And it also just goes overboard alongside with the other one. I'm gonna install a hose on this one as well to the coolant bottle that's also on the firewall. It should be below this pressure cap. All right, that's our 195 turbo engine. And we can't wait to see this particular one fly in a Zenith Super Duty pretty soon.